Hello everyone, happy Labor Day weekend. This is Tom with Capo Fetish. Let's talk about some of our favorite 70s soul albums. 70s soul is like a golden period, especially early 70s. So many like incredibly perfect records. I'm going to talk about 10 of my favorites. When I'm done, put your 10 favorites in the comment section. I'm going to start off here with an absolute perfect album. Stevie Wonder's Inner Visions from 1973. About 15 years ago, I saw Stevie play at the Santa Barbara Bowl. It was an incredible show. He must have played like over two and a half hours. He played most of the songs from this album. One of the highlights was Living for the City. It's such an epic track to begin with. Live, it was incredible. I always love all the changes in this track. It's a very heavy track. I mean, lyrically, musically. Um, and one of my favorite parts of the track is that coda. It's so, um, what is it? It's like so uh, kind of eerie and ominous sounding. And... The way it goes in The Golden Lady, that's one of my absolute favorite Stevie Wonder tracks. The, the melody, the just the whole positive vibe of the whole track. I've always loved Golden Lady. Every track is fantastic. Too High, some of his greatest ballads are on here. Visions, such a gorgeous track. Uh, All in Love is Fair. Another just uplifting number, uh, Don't You Worry About a Thing. Incredible, incredible stuff. Chord changes in that song and just... Stevie plays uh, all the tracks on certain certain songs of this album. He truly is a wonder. I mean, that's a perfect name for Stevie. He is a wonder. He's like the eighth wonder, you know what I mean? Eighth wonder of the world. This is a fantastic record. It's so timeless. Inner Visions, Stevie Wonder from 73. Another one here is uh, from 1971. I was just listening to this the other day. It is so fantastic. It is Laura Nero and LaBelle. The album called uh, Gonna Take a Miracle. They do a lot of covers. This is basically a covers album. They do a lot of 60s covers. Uh, they One of my favorites on here is the, their version of Dancing in the Street with Monkey Time. It's like a medley. That's really good. They do Smokey Robinson's You've Really Got a Hole on Me. So good. Two of my absolute favorites, though, on side two. It's a song called Wind. And it's really slow and, and very ethereal sounding and gorgeous uh, with Laura Nero's vocals and LaBelle backing her up. That's such a highlight. Uh, the, the title track, Gonna Take a Miracle too, is just, oh, this is such a great album from, from start to finish. Not, not a lot of people talk about this album. They usually talk about, you know, uh, New York Tendenberry or they talk about, uh, of course, Eli. This album really is just, I think it's up there with those albums in a different way. So great. Got LaBelle on the back, backing her up. It's just a perfect combination. Laura Nero and LaBelle, Gonna Take a Miracle from 1971. Another one, too, I've been uh, I've been re-listening to for this video is uh, just an album that really brings back a lot of memories from the mid-70s, 1975. I'm talking about Wars, Why Can't We Be Friends, including the hits Low Rider and the title track. It also just has just a, a plethora of amazing tracks. The first one called uh, Don't, Let no, Don't Let No One Get You Down, Lotus Blossom. There's this instrumental on here called Smile Happy. It's like a seven-minute instrumental. It's really, really cool. But uh, yeah, it's just, a, it's just one of those albums that just flows really well. And I think it's one of their greatest albums. Fantastic instrumentation. One thing I really love about War is uh, th 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 there's all these different styles cooking here. We've got uh, Latin jazz going on. We have soul, we got blues, got a little bit of rock. There's just a lot of good things going on. But I think one of the highlights of War are their harmonies. They really stick out. No one really sounds like War. Those har between the harmonies and the instrumentation, they really have their own thing going. I think they're just fantastic. War, Why Can't We Be Friends from 1975. A, a, a full-on drug-fueled, psychotic funk album, Sly and the Family Stone. There's a riot going on from 1971. What an amazing album. Uh, love and Hate. I love Family Affair. Uh, you Caught Me Smiling is such a great track. There's so many other bizarre tracks on here, like um, Spaced Cowboy. Love that track. Uh, the last track, uh, Thanks for Talking to Me, Africa. I think that's what it's called here. Yeah, Thank You for Talking to Me, Africa. Yes, goes on for about seven minutes. The album has uh, the shortest song ever in uh, human history. Clocks in at zero, zero, zero seconds. That is the title track. <laughs> You've got um, other tracks like, uh, what do we have here? We have um, Poet, Just Like a Baby. But I think one, two of my favorites, though, have definitely Running Away 
and uh, you caught me smiling. Just love those tracks. This is a, a complete different Sly and the Family Stone from the previous album, Stand, the previous single, uh, Everybody's a Star, and Thank You for Letting Me Be Myself Again. This is this is real, like, low-down funk, definitely drug-fueled, no doubt about it. There's, uh, there's a lot of tracks with just a drum machine on them, but the whole vibe of the album is really cool. Always loved it. There's a riot going on, Sly and the Family Stone from 1971. Another great one here from 72. So many great soul albums in the early 70s. Um, Bill Weathers, Still Bill. He, this guy really had his own thing going on. Really own style. Very earthy sounding voice. Um, the instrumentation too, very very low key and understated, but, but, but really like groove oriented. Just, just fantastic. And the songwriting is just excellent. I never get tired of Lean On Me and Use Me. So many amazing tracks all over this. I Don't Know is another favorite. Just, just one of those great kickback, put on the headphone listens from track 1 to 10. Bill Withers, Still Bill from 1972. This guy has many great, great albums, but I went through a phase around 1999, 2000, where I was listening to this compilation nonstop. I ended up seeing this guy on January 1st, 2000, the first day of the millennium at the House of Blues. Great show. He was throwing roses out in the audience. It was such an amazing time. I'm talking about Al Green, his greatest hits album. This initially came out in 75 and uh, originally had 10 tracks on it. All just absolute bangers. Every track is incredible. Tired of being alone, call me. I'm still in love with you. Here I am, love and happiness, one of my favorites. Let's stay together. I love his version of I can't, I can't, I can't get next to you. Uh, you ought to be with me. Uh, look what you've done to me. Let's get married. And then the bonus tracks are just fantastic. Um, uh, Living for you, sha la la, uh, full of fire. Ends with Bell, where he does this this squeal like I've never heard. This this squeal goes on for about ten seconds. It's just incredible. It's like on the outro. This is what you call a perfect greatest hits collection. Guy has so many great singles, great albums as well, but I had to put this in as one of my favorites because it's so absolutely perfect. Al Green's greatest hits. Another one, of course, is people call this the Sgt. Pepper of Soul, and I, I can't disagree. This is a perfect record. What's going on, Marvin Gaye from 71? It just flows perfectly. The production is pristine. Everything about it, the vibe of it, it's completely timeless. The lyrics are com completely just, it's pretty much now what's going on, right? So the title track, epic. Uh, what's happening, brother? Flying high in the friendly sky. Save the children. God is love. Mercy, mercy me. All in side one. Just flows perfectly. Side two, right on. Goes into holy, holy. And then my favorite track on the album, Inner City Blues, with that really just spine tingling coda it's so subtle and understated they break down he starts repeating some phrases from the title track and then it's just you hear the you hear the congas or whatever and it starts kind of slowly fading out it's so so amazing definitely definitely just spine chilling that ending for me always has been inner city blues what's going on for marvin gay from 71 Another one is the Superfly soundtrack from Curtis Mayfield. Just a, an absolute talent. Loved his stuff with the impressions in the 60s. So many great singles. Um, it's All Right. And songs like People Get Ready, which so many people have covered. It's such a great anthem. Um, but he, he completely changed his style in the 70s. A guy who just completely transcended the 60s and came up with a whole new sound here. In the early 70s, he's a great producer, arranger, writer. I love his falsetto. Uh, love this album, uh, Freddy's Dead, uh, the, the, the title track, Superfly, Little Child uh, Running Wild. Sometimes um, sometimes uh, less is more, and this is one of those albums that just gets to the point from start to finish. It's perfect. 1972, Curtis Mayfield, Superfly. Of course, I got I to gotta put this guy in here. Um, he put out some of the greatest soul hits of the 70s. So many great singles from the 60s and 70s. This is the start, part of the Star Time box set from James Brown, uh, discs three and four, just uh, mostly encompassing the entire 70s. Is his 70s output, his 70s singles, uh, pretty much starting with the uh, Sex Machine, 
going through all these amazing singles, Super Bad, Talking Loud and Saying Nothing, uh, King Heroin, where he does kind of like this preaching thing over this kind of low-key back background, you know, uh, setup, vibe, music. Uh, Hot Pants, so great. Then you've got like Doing It to Death, there it is. Uh, we got Public Enemy, number one, which he kind of does some preaching on, which is fantastic. Uh, you got Pop It, Baba Don't Take No Mess. Uh, just, I mean, on and on and on. Just one great single after another. Again, from the five-star masterpiece box set. Uh, Star Time, discs three and four, which encompasses his entire 70s hits. James Brown, Star Time. And then uh, my number one, my favorite album of Soul from the 1970s is an absolute perfect album. It's not only one of my favorite soul albums, one of my favorite albums of all time, definitely a top 25. And that is Stevie Wonder's Talking Book from 1972. A, an incredible mixture of pop, beautiful ballads, funk, soul, you name it, it's all on here. You know, Superstition, the singles, su Superstition, um, You Are the Sunshine of My Life, but that's just the beginning. You've got... Uh, you got it, bad girl. You got Tuesday heartbreak. I mean, on and on. It's just, and then it ends with, uh, I believe when I fall in love with you, it'll be forever. Oh, God, what an amazing track. The way it starts off, and then at the end, that outro, it's so uplifting. Oh, my God. There's just not a bad second on this album. He has Jeff Beck on uh, looking, for another, looking for Another Pure Love. Jeff Beck does this really, like, super dry guitar solo. With, with with a lot of that James, that Jeff Beck uh, kind of like lyrical kind of playing, really amazing. And uh, yeah, this is what you call a five star masterpiece right here. Just every song, perfectly done. And I think he was uh, he went on tour with the Rolling Stones during this period, during, uh, promoting part of this album or promoting this album during this period, the 1972 Stones World Tour where they were promoting Exile. He was promoting Talking Book, but yeah. Just an absolute classic. That is my favorite soul album from the 1970s. I'm sure some of you are asking, what about uh, what about Songs in the Key of Life? I love that album, but this one really hits me on a personal level. It's fantastic. Let me know what your favorites are in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you dig the content, press subscribe. And have a great Labor Day weekend and take care. Bye-bye.